All right, and we are live. Good evening po sa inyong lahat mga kaguro. And of course, welcome back to Gurung Pinoy. Hello sa lahat ng members ng Team Bruner. Again, Team Bruner are our babies for Let March 2023. Of course, if you are a member of Team Bruner, you can watch our, our full-length video and you can also download all our PDF files. Po, pwede niyo din pong balikan lahat ng mga previous videos and previous discussion that we have had in Team Bruner. Now again, we still have some few slots left for Section B. No? So humabol na po kayo. Just send a message to our Facebook page. Now, we also have our major ship schedule. You can see that on your screen right now. Filipino, MAPE, Social Science, TLE, and AFA are all um, seeing each other, all having their discussions every Saturday. So November 19th was their discussion one. November 26th will be their discussion two. English, Math, Science, they all meet on Sundays. Of course, November 27th, that's going to be the schedule for discussion two of these majors. So again, if you fall under all of these or any of these majorship, just send a message to our Facebook page that they have their own Facebook group, no, meron po silang exclusive Facebook group. And of course, you can just go back, no, po pwede niyo pong balikan lahat ng ating videos, lahat ng ating discussions doon, and also your diagnostic test, okay? Just send a message to our Facebook page. Now, we also have opened our civil service review, full online uh, review, no, review program. And of course, your civil service exam is going to be on March 26. So, kasabay po siya ng LEP. And so, if you are planning to take the civil service, hindi po kayo po pwede mag-take ng kasabay ng LEP, pwede po sa mga next na batch kayo mag-take. Okay, so your application uh, period is from December 14th until 21st, requirements, application form, your four pieces, passport size, ID picture, valid ID, examination fee of 500. These are all the things that you need to apply for the exam. No? So ito po yung kailangan yung dalhin sa Civil Service Commission. There is no educational requirement for taking the CSE. And so again, we have this unlimited online review. And so just send a message to our Facebook page that's Gurung Pinoy so that you can join our review for civil service. Their uh, orientation is going to be on December 3rd. Okay, so magsend na po kayo na message sa ating Facebook page. Now, tonight's discussion is centered on general education. Again, please do like, love, share our video, start a watch party, tag your friends. And of course, you can also support us by sending us stars on Facebook and sending us super chat and super stickers naman dyan po sa ating YouTube channel. Now, um... Uh, Jen Ed po tayo ngayong gabi, no? and again, um, atin pong video is of course all exclusive. The full length video will be all exclusive for uh, the members of Team Bruner. If you have prob problems regarding your English, no? sa English po, okay, wala pang files na na-upload, no? so hintayin nyo lamang po. I will be reminding Coach Paul. Okay, now again, Jen Ed tonight, we also have our uh, program right now. No? Share this video and tag 10 of your friends. Friends, those friends, of course, who will be taking the licensure exam for teachers to win GCash. No, para po may chance kayo to win GCash. We are going to look for that share button, and of course, we are go also going to check if you have tagged ten of your friends. Okay, now if you cannot comment then po sa ating Facebook page, that means you are not a follower. So please do follow our Facebook page. If you cannot comment on our YouTube channel, please do subscribe so that you can also uh, comment sa ating pong YouTube channel. All right, now before we start with anything else, again, uh, let's all start with our opening prayer. Samahan niyo po ako mga kaguro. Dear Lord, I come to you to ask for your guidance and direction in this study session. I ask that the Holy Spirit fill me with strength, creativity, and understanding to get through my studies without difficulty or sin. Help me hold my focus and attention. Help me to retain all that I learned. Please make my mind sharp and keep distractions at bay. If any part of my studying is weak or lacking in some way, let it be revealed so that I may correct it. Thank you for this opportunity to learn. Amen. All right. Now, once again, this is general education. If medyo blurry yung ating video, paki-click ng video and look for those three dots and change the video quality. If nakikita niyo yung captions, you can also turn off the captions. No? Pupwede niyo pong i-turn off dyan sa inyong settings. Again, please do share this video and tag 10 of your friends so that you'll have a chance to win GCash. Like, love, share our video. Start a watch party. Tag your friends, of course. A send a star. Send a super chat, super stickers. General education. We start with question number one. 
The classes were all in the rooms of the school and stacks of papers were piled up. What were the collective nouns in the sentence? Would it be letter A, classes, stacks, letter B, classes, school, stacks, letter C, classes, school, or letter D, school, stacks? Okay, what is our choice for question number one? Okay, number one, English. Again, please do share our video and tag 10 of your friends so that you may have a chance to win our GCash. Okay, I see A's for question number one. Letter A for question number one. Okay, tumpakya ang letter A for question one. Okay, again, yung hinahanap natin for question number one would be the collective nouns. No, ano nga po yung collective nouns in Filipino? Okay, we've also discussed this in our previous sessions. Ano nga yung tawag natin sa ating collective nouns in Filipino? Pangalang ano? Okay, ano klase ng pangalan? In Filipino, ano ang collective nouns? Okay, I still see a lot of A's, may ilang ibang letra. Lansakan, sabi ni Ma Marian Nano. Okay, Filipino represent ba? Okay, palansak. Okay, pangalang lansak po. Sabi ni Ma'am Jan Rose, malaki evangelio. Okay, so lansak, no? Lansak or lansakan. Lansak or lansakan yung inyong collective nouns. Okay, so ito po ay nagre-represent, of course, ng isang grupo. Hindi ng isang tao, isang bagay lamang. Okay, so here we are being tasked to look for the collective nouns. Okay, would it be letter A, classes, stats? Letter B, classes, school, stats? Letter C, classes and school? Or letter D, school and, and stats? And the correct choice here, of course, is tama. Most of you, the correct choice is letter A. No, it's classes and stats. Now, your classes, of course, this would represent the different rooms, no? different sections, and different rooms uh, or groups. No? And, of course, the stacks there would be the groups of papers. No? So piles of papers, that would be your stacks. And although you would say na yung school ay po pwede ding maging collective noun, in this case right here, school is not used as a collective noun. Kasi yung school, whenever you use school, the term school as a collective noun, this would usually be followed by um, the preposition with fish, no? so of fish, school of fish, or school of whales, group. Group po kasi siya ng isda na yung school. Okay? And so we cannot consider school as one of our collective nouns for number one. And so the correct choice would just be letter A, that's classes and stacks only. Now, here are a few of our collective nouns. You have a flock of geese, a gang of slaves, a group of islands, etc. No? So a uh, stack of books is uh, sa ating, nandyan sa ating blue column. Uh, you also have a class of students, no? so group of students and jan sa ating red column. Okay, so these are just a few of some examples of your collective noun. So again, if you are a member of um, if you are a member of Tim Bruner, then you can uh, see this later no? sa ating PDF file. Sir jo Joven Roy Domingo Valdez. BLCK International fans po pala kayo, ma'am. Okay. All right. Now, we move on with question number two. Okay. Unang tanong, ligwak. Okay lang po yan, ma'am Erika Dabu. Okay. Number two, Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers is a sentence that uses what figure of speech? Would it be letter A, onomatopoeia, letter B, allusion, letter C, apostrophe, or letter D, alliteration? Sabi ni ma'am Milet, marites, grupo ng kapitbahay. Okay. Yung mga nagkukumpul-kumpulang kapitbahay, marites. Okay? So sila din yung mga, mga grupo na mga nagkukumpul-kumpulan yung mga kapitbahay na inyong pakakainin kapag kayo ay meron ng lisensya. Siyempre, lalabas na inyong yabang factor. May license na ako. etong sa inyo, mga marites. Okay, letter D for number two. Alliteration. Mm-hmm. Okay, letter, 
Letter D for number two. So sabi dito, Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers, a sentence that uses what figure of speech? The correct choice, of course, is letter D. Okay, so tumpak in letter D. Alliteration is the repetition of sounds of words. Now, usually, uh, the sounds of words that are adjacent, na magkakatabi na mga, um, na mga words, na mga salita. Okay, so that's Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Po pwede she sells, he shells by the seashore. Po pwede mini mekaniko ni Monica ang makina ng, Monica, ng, ng minika ni Monica. <laughs> Sabihin ko sana yung, yung makina ni Monica. Okay, ang makina ng minika ni Monica. Okay, so those are some examples of alliteration or alliteration. All right, now what about the rest of your choices? So again, onomatopoeia, this is a formation of a word from a sound associated with what is named. So examples would be buzz of a bee, a buzzing bee, okay? Creaking of door, okay? So depende sa sound, no? Yan po yung ating onomatopoeia. Allusion, this means reference. So for example, when you say Romeo or Casanova or Adonis, Is, no, that would usually represent your mga matitipunong lalaki, ng mga poging lalaki. Hello sa lahat ng mga poging lalaki. Say present if you are a Romeo, a Casanova, or an Adonis. Venus naman sa mga babaeng magaganda at sexy. And of course, Einstein sa mga genius. No? So alin ka dyan sa ating, sa ating allusion, sa ating references. And of course, you have letter C apostrophe. Uh, ito naman ay pagtawag no, in Filipino. So, addressing someone dead or absent. For example, Romeo, uh, the, the, that part of the play, no, yung, yung scene kung nasaan nandun si Juliet sa, sa balkonahe at hinahanap niya si Romeo. No? Romeo or Romeo, wherefore art the Romeo? No? That's um, an apostrophe pagtawag in Filipino. Or Basilio, Crispin, nasaan na kayong mga anak ko? Okay, by Sisa. Okay, so yan po ay isa ding apostrophe. Alright, so again, meron po tayong video na to na figures of speech with examples and with Filipino translation. So hanapin niyo po sa ating YouTube channel, Mr. Suave. Present daw yung mga Adonis dito. Alright, now we move on with question number three. Si Fe ay masayang naghihintay sa kanyang ina. Paano ginagamit ang salitang sinalungguhitan sa pangungusap? Is it letter A, pang-uri? Letter B, pang-abay? Letter C, pang-ukol? Or letter D, pang-diwa? What is our choice for question number three? Aba, Sir Richmond Sugano, present. <laughs> That's the confidence, sir. Present, Sir PJ Asia Mitra, Adonis. Okay. Ang daming confident. May yabang factor. All right. I see letter A's and B's sa ating question number three. That, uh, sa, sa ating question number three, medyo magkakatalo, no? Kung ang ating letter A at B, sino kaya magwawagi at sino kaya maliligwak? Okay. Alin kaya ang tumpak at alin kaya ang ligwak? All right. So, I see a lot of letter A's and also a lot of letter B's sa ating... Question number three. Now, actually, ang inyong um, salitang masaya, po pwede kasi, kasi siyang maging pang-uri, that's adjective, po pwede din siyang maging pang-abay, okay? So, yung pang-abay mo is an adverb, no? Remember, when you say pang-uri or adjective, describe niya yung isang noun or pronoun, no? So, um... Um, it describes no, your nouns and your pronouns. Ang inyo namang pang-abay or your adverb, nagde-describe siya ng, um, ng inyong verb. Okay? So, um, yung, yung pangkilos nyo, no, ng mga salita, ng verb, ng adjective, or ng another adverb. Okay? And so, dito sa ating pangungusap, no, tingnan natin kung paano nga ba ginamit ang salitang masaya. Si Fe ay masayang naghihintay sa kanyang ina. So ito ba, yung salitang masaya ba ay nag-describe kay Fe, which is or who is your, your now, no? ito yung inyong pangalan dito sa ating pangungusap. Si Fe ba ay describe ng masaya or yung masaya ba ay nagde-describe sa paghintay ni Fe? Okay, so kanyang action na paghintay, naghihintay sa kanyang ina. The correct choice here is letter B. Okay, so pang-abay po ang ating tumpak na choice. Ayan na naman si Ma'am Marian Nano. 
Okay, describing your verb, naghihintay. Filipino major yata si Ma'am Marian. Okay, and so si Fe ay masayang naghihintay. Yung masaya mo dito ay actually nagde-describe sa paghihintay. Paano siya naghihintay? Siya ay masayang naghihintay. Pero pag sinabi mong si Fe ay masaya, so then your masaya there would be describing Fe and that would be a pang-uri. Okay, so letter B, pang-abay po ang ating tumpak na choice. Now, yung pang-ukol mo, that's preposition in Filipino, pandiwa, of course, that's verb. Okay, so letter B, pang-abay. I hope, klaro, kung bakit naging pang-abay po ang ating tumpak na choice. Okay, so um, magunos dili, no? Hindi lamang English yung nakakapag-panosebleed uh, sa atin kahit Filipino din. So, hinay-hinay, medyo preno, tingnan ng, maag, ng maigi, no? tingnan ng mabuti yung mga tanong natin sa Filipino. Medyo tricky din siya. Alright, we move on with question number four. Okay, ito din yung inyong paborito. The value of 25 over 18 times 9 over 15 times 6 over 35. Is it letter A, 3 over 25th? Letter B, 4 over 25th? Or letter C, 8 over 25th? Or letter D, 1 seventh? Okay, what is our choice? 3 25 4 25 8 25 or 1 seventh? Ayos lang yan. Sabi ng isang naligwak ni Facebook user, ayos lang yan, basta masaya siya naghihintay. Okay, letter D. Karamihan choice ninyo. Tumpak kaya ang letter D. Again, meron po tayong program, no? Kung inyo pong isi-share yung ating video at kayo po ay magtatag ng sampung friends, ay uh, malalaki po yung inyong pangalan sa ating parafol mamaya no? for the GCash. Okay, so please make sure that you have the share button and of course that you have also tagged 10 friends. Okay, four I see letter Ds. Let's take a look at our um, discussion. Sabi ni Ma'am Misha Ramos D kasi sabi ng karamihan. Okay, we are looking for the value of these fractions. No? So what we'll do here is we are going to uh, compute muna. No? We try to compare these two, two, the first two fractions and we are going to try to look for the GCF no? between the numerator denominator of the opposing fractions para of course mas simplify natin yung fractions. Mas madali yung ating pagsusolve. Okay, so we take the first two fractions first you have 25 over 18 times 9 over 15. So what we do here is we get the GCF of 25 and 15. Ano ba yung GCF ng ating 25 and 15? That of course would be 5. Okay, so we divide 25 and 15 by 5. So doing that, you'll have 5. Uh, okay, sorry, no. Uh, Naskip pala, no. So that, that would be 5 and then this one would be um, this one, of course, would be 3. No? So uh, 25 divided by 5 is 5. Then, of course, you have 15 divided by 5. That's 3. Okay, so ilagay ko lamang dito. That's 5. And, of course, this one is 3. Okay, we do the same thing for 9 and 18. And, of course, their GCF would be 9. Okay, so 9 divided by 9 is 1. And 18 divided by 9 is 2, okay? So then now, you can easily multiply, no? So mas madali na yung inyong pagmumultiply. That would be 5 times 1, giving you 5. And 2 times 3, giving you 6, okay? So kumbaga, yung 5 over 6 mo dito, this is already the, the answer, no? Sa inyong first two fractions. And so your 5 over 6 here, you multiply this also by the last fraction kasi di ba nga hindi pa natin ginagamit itong last fraction natin. Okay, so here as you can see, unang-una yung 5 and 35 mo, meron silang GCF. No? So meron silang GCF which of course is 5. Okay, so 5 yung GCF ng 5 and 35. 5 divided by 5, of course, is 1. 35 divided by 5 is 7. And of course, very obvious, your 6 and 6, that can just be considered 1 na lang sila. No? GCF would just be 6, of course, so 1 and 1. And so you are left with 1 times 1, okay? So magiging 1 na lamang ito. 1, and this one would also be 1. So you are left with 1 times 1 and 1. 1 times 7 naman sa inyong denominator. And so the correct choice would be letter D, 
one seventh. Okay, so letter D, one seventh ang ating tumpak na choice. I hope klaro kung bakit one seventh po yung ating tumpak na choice. And so again, pag medyo allergic sa math and you are a part of Team Bruner, po pwede nyo pong balikan yung ating video. And of course, this uh, PDF file is going to be made available after this discussion. Okay, we move on with question number five. And after years of anticipation, they finally met. Tensions were high because of this much hyped meeting. What will happen? Will they fight? Will they hug? Those questions will be answered now. This paragraph is best fit for what part for the short story? Would it be letter A, a rising action? Letter B, climax? Letter C, exposition? Or letter D, falling action? Okay, what is our choice for number five? Hello sa ating mga English majors. Okay, ano kaya ang ating tumpak na choice for number five? I see a lot of letter Bs for number five. Sir PJ Mitra, marami salamat for sharing our video. If nakapag-tag si Sir PJ ng 10 friends, automatic kasali si Sir PJ mamaya sa ating pong paraffle. Okay, so Gcash of 500 pesos. All right, number five, A or B. Okay, karamihang choice niyo ay letter B, na letter B. Okay, so sabi dito, tensions were high. What will happen? Will they fight? Will they hug? Those questions will be answered now. So this paragraph is best fit for what part uh, for, the, for the short story? The correct choice here is letter B. That's your climax. Okay, so torn between A and B, Sir Alcover, but the correct choice is letter B, that's the climax. Okay, so climax letter B, ang ating tumpak na choice. So these right here are the different sequence of events, no? sequence of events mo in a literary work or what you call the plot, no? these different parts of your plot. So unang-una would be your exposition. This introduces the characters, background, and setting. Kumbaga parang panimula siya, no? setting of the story. Rising action adds complications to leading to the climax. No? Ayan na, no? medyo papunta na sa exciting na part. And of course, the climax, that's the highest point of action or interest, a moment of great emotional intensity or suspense in a plot. So ito na yung pinaka-exciting na part. No? So sabi ni, ni Dr. Jill, papunta pa lang tayo sa exciting na part, uh, sa pinaka-exciting na part. So that means rising action pa lang yun. Nung napunta na sa pinaka-exciting na part, that would be the climax. Okay, so climax na po yan. Then you have your falling action. That would be the opposite of your rising action. The action that is a result of your climax. And of course, you have the resolution. It tells or implies the outcome outcome of the story. No? Ano nang nangyari? Ano yung katapusan ng story? What is another term for resolution? Sa ating mga English majors, no? if you can help out the rest of our kaguro, ano po yung another term natin? Yung other term for resolution. Okay? Ano po yung ating other term for resolution? Ayon, sabi ni Sir Jehu Salazar Dinoma. The Noma. Okay, so tama po yan. No? That would be another term for your resolution. Okay? But the correct choice here would be letter B, climax for this item. We move on with the next item. Okay, number six. A woman has normal ovaries and uterus but cannot bear a child because of blocked fallopian tube. Which technological process can help her bear a child? Would it be letter A? Tubal ligation, letter B, in vivo or in vivo fertilization, letter C, in vitro fertilization, or letter D, hysterec hysterectomy. Okay, what is our choice? Number six. Okay, number six. So, merong isang nanay, uh, normal naman yung kanyang ovaries at yung kanyang uterus, pero black yung kanyang fallopian tube. And so, anong technological process yung makakapag-help? Para magkaroon ng anak, ang, ng junakis, itong nanay na ito. Okay? I see a lot of letter C's and that would be tumpak. No? In vitro fertilization, ito po yung ginagawa natin sa laboratories na test to babies. Yan would be your in vitro fertilization is what you do. Um, uh, what you do here would be finifertilize yung egg cell ng nanay with the sperm cell ng tatay but it happens in 
uh, petri dish no nasa petri dish and then eventually po pwede siyang ibalik sa uterus ng nanay para maggrow yung uh, embryo okay now tubal ligation this would be the operation na tinatay yung inyong tube when you say tube here this is your fallopian tube I remember, no, if you can backtrack fertilization, yung meeting ng inyong egg cell and sperm cell, that would happen in the fallopian tube, hindi po sa uterus, no? So, dapat e eh, maliksi, dapat strong, dapat e eh, naka, naka ginseng yung sperm cells ng tatay para siguradong mahihit, no, yung target. Kasi maglalakbay pa po yung sperm cells ng tatay pa, papunta sa fallopian tube, no? So, marami pa siyang pagdadaanan. Mamaya, meron niya akong visual aids of the different parts of the rep reproductive system of uh, female. No? So marami pa siyang uh, dadaanan hanggang makapunta siya sa fallopian tube kung saan niya iminit yung kanyang uh, partner, no? the egg cell. Okay? So that's two by ligation. No? It Itatay po yung fallopian tube and so it's one way of birth control. In vivo fertilization mo naman, this is done with... Um, with organisms, so, so living things, for example, sa rats, sa plants, po pwede siyang gawin. Okay? And of course, hysterectomy naman, this is the removal of the uterus. Okay? So uterus or cervix ay nire-remove. This is also another part or another method of birth control sa mga babae. Okay? Pero letter C po yung ating hinahanap dito. All right, now, ah, wala pala. Mamaya pa yata yung aking um, visual aid. Okay, number seven. This is another math question, a math problem. A can do a piece of work in six days and B in four days. How long will it take them working together to complete the work? Letter A, three days. Letter B, two and two-fifths days. Letter C, ten days. Or letter D, twelve days. Ginseng po ang sagot, Ma'am Maria. Ginseng, malamig na lugar, um, yung inyong mga aphrodisiac, no? Chocolate, talaba, tahong, um, sabi nila, buko juice. Okay, so dapat nakakondisyon naka si tatay. And of course, dapat normal din yung mga uh, parte ni nanay. Eh, kaya nga sinasabi na kapag ka ikaw ay, nakita ko kanina yung comment, hindi ko lang natandaan kung sino na comment Kapag ka ikaw ay pinanganak, you are already a winner. Okay? So, winner yung sperm cell na nag-fertilize sa egg cell ng nanay mo. And of course, ikaw ay nabuo, ikaw ay nakasurvive, no? So, you are already a winner. You are a champion. And you will be an LPT very, very soon. Okay, what's your choice? B. Mm -hmm. Okay, so A can do a piece of work in six days. And B in four days. How long will it take them working together to complete the work? Okay, so this is a working together problem. No? So working together siya. If you can remember, our formula is 1 over A plus 1 over B equals 1 over T. Where A here is the time it takes for A to finish the work alone, okay? And B here is the time it takes for B to finish the work alone. And of course, T is the time it takes for uh, both of them to finish the, the, the work together, no? so working together nato. All right, so substituting the um, uh, different numbers that we have here sa ating problem, you have 1 over 6 plus 1 over 4. So nanggaling yung 6 dito sa 6 days, no? so 6 days yung kailangan ni A, at 4 days naman yung kailangan ni B. And we are trying to find the total time that they have when they are working together. Now, as you can see, no, you have dissimilar fractions. Your fractions here do not have the same denominator. And so, hindi natin sila po pwedeng i-add ng diretsyo. And now, you can use your butterfly method dito. No? Po pwede mong gamitin yung butterfly method. So, what you do is you multiply 1 by 4. Okay, so butterfly method. No? So, 1 times 4 is 4. And 1 times 6 is 6. Now, just copy the sign in the middle. So, 1 times 4 is 4 plus 1 times 6 is 6. Then, you multiply the denominators. No? So, 6 times 4 is 24 equals 1 over t. We simply copy this part right here. Now, you can already combine your numerators here. 4 plus 6, of course, that's 10. 10 over 24 equals 1 over t. Now, cross multiply. Okay, so cross multiply ulit tayo. 10 times t is 10t, 
and 1 times 24 is 24. Therefore, for you to get the value of t, you need to divide both sides by 10. Okay, so t equals 24 over 10. Or 2.4, you simply move the decimal point here one time to the left, no, kasi multiple of 10 siya. Or uh, in mixed number form, that would be 2 and 2 fifths days. Okay, so your correct choice here is letter B. So letter B, ang tumpak na choice. All right, we move on with question number 8. Again, sa mga allergic sa math, nabalikan po ito later. Okay, so tingnan kung paano natin isolve at kung medyo naguguluhan while well, just looking at your PDF, po pwede pong balikan, i-replay yung ating video. Okay, we move on with question number 8. Ay, hindi po i-average Facebook user. Hindi po. Gagamit po tayo ng ating formula. Okay, so number 8. A person with diabetes has insulin deficiency. What organ secretes insulin? Would it be letter A, the liver? Letter B, thyroid? Letter C, kidney? Or letter D, pancreas? Okay, what is our choice? Number eight. Okay, question number eight. I see this. All right, letter D, and that is correct. No, that's your pancreas, specifically the islets of Langer hands ng inyong pancreas. Okay, so islets of Langer hands ng inyong pancreas ang nagsisikrit ng inyong insulin. And of course, that controls the blood sugar level sa ating mga persons with diabetes, sa mga diabetic natin. Okay, so hello po sa ating mga bio babies. No? Gen Sci na, sa, sa, sa March, no? Gen Sci na, sa mutsaring sciences na yung kailangan yung itackle. And so, dalawang pinagsamang malalaking coaches na no? mabibigat at magagaling na coaches yung ating uh, nagdi-discuss para sa ating Gen Sci. So kung ikaw ay Gen Sci major at hindi ka pa po nag-e-enroll, magpa-member na po sa Gunung Pinoy. Alright, we move on with question number 9. The protein shell of a virus is called letter A, capsid, letter B, nucleus nucleic acid, letter C, nucleolus, or letter D, nucleus. Okay, what's your choice? Number nine. Number nine, A or B? Okay, a lot of you are saying letter A. Letter A for question number nine. The protein shell of a virus is called, the correct choice, of course, is letter A. That's your capsid. Okay, so ito po yung itsura ng inyong capsid, no? So your virus, usually, it would only have one type of genetic material. Po pwedeng RNA, po pwedeng DNA, no? But not both, okay? So never both. And of course, your capsid, that would be the shell that protects the RNA, no? the genetic material of your virus. Okay, so now your nucleic acid, pag sinabi mo pong nucleic acid, this is one type of biomolecule. Mer meron kang dalawang klase ng nucleic acid, your DNA or your RNA. Ang DNA mo, that would be your genetic material kung bakit ikaw ay kamukha ng inyong tatay or kamukha ng inyong nanay or kamukha ng inyong lolo or lola, kombinasyon ng inyong nanay at tatay, never kamukha ng kumpare ng inyong tatay, okay? Pag kamukha ka ng kumpare, kamukha ka ng ninong mo, medyo kabahan ka na, okay? So that's your DNA, genetic information, genetic um, genetic molecule natin, no? genetic molecule. Yung inyo namang RNA, this one right here, it's also a nucleic acid, yung function naman is for making of proteins. Your proteins are very important as one of um, the biomolecules then sa ating, uh, sa ating uh, katawan, of course. Now, nucleolus and nucleus, ito po yung structures natin, or yung nucleus mo, ito yung tinatawag na, uh, na brain ng cell. Okay, so lahat ng functions ng cell mo is controlled by or are controlled by your nucleus. And of course, ang nucleolus, ito po yung mga spherical structures, no? mga dots, na nasa gitna ng inyong uh, nucleus, ang uh, function po ng inyong nucleolus ay ang paggawa ng ribosomes. Ang ribosomes po ay gumagawa ng proteins. Okay? So, gumagawa din siya ng, ng uh, proteins. Okay? But here, capsid ang ating tumpak na choice. Alright, we go to number 10. In which part of the reproductive system does a growing fetus live? Letter A, ovary. Letter B, cervix. Letter C, uterus. Or letter D, fallopian tube. Okay, what is our choice? Number 10, ano po ang ating tumpak na choice? Okay, sabi ni Ma'am Milet, letter C. 
Sir Marvin, letter C. Sir Lester, letter C. Ma'am Rachel, letter C. Ma'am Belle, letter C. Okay, so karamihan sa inyo, letter C ang sinasabi. Saan ba nag-grow yung fetus? Now, of course, the fetus, that's uh, the growing baby inside the, the body of the woman, of the mom. And the correct choice here would be letter C. That's the uterus, okay? Now, this right here, ito na yung aking visual aid, no? So, these are the different parts of the reproductive system of a female. So, una-una, this one right here, no? Ito po yung inyong over meron kang left and right ovaries. Very important yung uh, function ng inyong ovary kasi siya po yung uh, nag-form, uh, siya, siya po yung nag-produce ng inyong egg cells. Okay? Now, unlike the males na palaging may supply, no? So, kahit matanda na yung isang lalaki, po pwede pa rin siyang manging tatay kasi palaging may fresh supply ng sperm cells yung mga lalaki. Tayo po mga babae, kahit nasa sinapupunan pa lang tayo ng ating nanay, meron na po tayong egg cells, no? So, na-produce na, na, na yung ating egg cells. But then again, hindi pa sila mature, no? Follicles pa lang sila. Ayan, nakikita nyo yung term na follicle dito. Follicles pa lang po sila. And of course, uh, inside those follicles, yung egg cells mo, eventually they will mature once you already undergo your secondary sexual maturation na nakapag uh, uh, menart ka na, no? Nagregla ka na. And so, yung sinasabi nga nila, may limit yung mga babae. No? So, hindi po pwedeng mag-wait ka for a really long time for you to to try to have a baby. no So, dapat eh, uh, prior to 40, ay mabuntis ka na. Okay? So, that kasi may, may limit tayo. No? Those are only the, may, may set number of egg cells tayo kahit nandun pa lang tayo sa womb ng ating nanay. Okay? And so, this is your your ovary. So, i-release niya yung inyong egg cell. And of course, this is your oviduct, no? yung uh, fallopian tube na sinasabi natin kanina. Dito pa po mag-meet yung ating sperm cell at yung egg cell. Kaya sinabi ko kanila, dapat may ginseng, may talaba, may tahong, etc. No? May aphrodisia para malampasan ng, eggs, uh, ng sperm cell lahat ng challenges na kanyang pagdadaanan. No? Uh, so dito pa po mag-meet yung egg cells at yung sperm cells. And once fertilization has happened, kailangan mag-travel ng growing embryo into the uterus. Hindi po po pwedeng dyan sa fallopian tube because the fallopian tube is not uh, elastic unlike your uterus. Okay? Kung nasa fallopian tube po siya, hindi po mabubuo yung bata. Of course, eventually i-abort yung bata. No, This is a condition which we call... Um, ectopic pregnancy no so ectopic pregnancy po yan di po, po pwede na yung bata ay dito na buo or dito lumalaki sa fallopian tube so minsan minsan inoopera no so minsan naman um eventually namamatay lang yung yung uh, embryo okay so dito siya sa uterus of course it's very flexible lalaki siya Okay, nag na flex siya no kumbaga. Your endometrium, this is the lining of your your uterus. Ito yung nagthicken uh, kapag ka tayo ay papunta na sa regla no. So pag pag um uh, nagthicken siya um in in anticipation of a baby no kung merong ma kung merong magkakaroon ka ng baby, kung wala naman, magsished off lang yung lining ng inyong uterus, yung endometrium, and that is what you call your menstruation, na may menstruate lang siya. This would be the cervix, ito yung pinakanek ng inyong uterus, and of course, ito din, flexible din siya, no? elastic din siya. Ito po yung uh, mini-measure ng doktor during your IE, no? so mini-measure kung dilated na siya, kung po pwede ka na mag-labor. And of course, we all know what a vagina is, okay? It's self-explanatory. There's no need for me to to explain it. Okay, but the correct choice here is letter C, that's the uterus. Alright, we move on with question number 11. Isang dulog pang panitika na kilala sa katawagan na reader response theory. Letter A, pansikolohiya. Letter B, antropolohiya. Letter C, patalambuhay. Or letter D, impressionista. Okay, what is our choice? Okay, ano po ang ating choice? Number 11, ICDs. Letter D for number 11. Tumpa kaya ang letter D? Okay, number 11. What's your choice? 